A lot of rubbish we will gather during the course of this weekend. Matthew Dickerson, I find it uh, rather ironic that I'm talking to you, a uh, not only a, a genius as far as tech is concerned, but uh, you driving Enviro-friendly cars, and we're talking about the future of garbage trucks. Yeah. I would imagine you'd be thinking about eliminating the things. Oh, well, that'd be nice to eliminate them, but that would mean we'll never eliminate rubbish. Yeah, we'll never eliminate garbage, will we? We won't eliminate garbage. I mean, that's going to be very difficult. How do you You eliminate... and I are doing it now. We're talking it. This <laughs> right. is the show's about rubbish. No, 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 no. <laughs> so, I mean, garbage trucks are, uh, have changed over the years, haven't they? I mean, they have. When I, when I was growing up before paper, as you know, <laughs> uh, they would come rumbling down your street. They'd pick up your galvanised tin, your yeah. garbage. And they'd... Well, they didn't know. People, back in the old that's days, right, people... Right. The used... people would pick it up yeah, and then it. throw the garbage tin on the on the ground and it'd rattle and crash and you'd wake up because it's four o'clock in the morning. Yep. And then they'd hurl it up to their buddy up the top of the truck. Hey, Joe! And garbage would spill everywhere and with a stink and a wolf, they'd have moved to the next house and do the same thing all over again. All changed now. That's now right. the, Now the garbage truck picks it up by a nice little forklift, yep. throws it in its back and disappears. And I reckon a lot of NRL players have been influenced by that because <laughs> it used to be a favourite occupation of NRL players, jumping off the back of a truck, running around, lifting up, they did their weights, they did their fitness yep. training all in one go and no. got paid for it. And no more. Yeah, no more. So we've got, we've got NRL players who don't have exercise. <laughs> That's right. Would they ever be EVs? I think they are in some parts of the world. They are EVs because really? it's, a, it's a perfect situation for an EV. Because you think about it, what you're doing is you're stopping, you're starting, you're stopping, you're starting, and you've got a big weight there. You want a lot of torque to get that big weight moving, and it doesn't need to be doing 150 kilometres an hour. It needs to be doing five kilometres an hour, ten no. kilometres an hour. Yeah. So that's where it's absolutely perfect. You know, when you're near a garbage truck and you hear it take off, you kind of hear the engine get going to get this big weight move, and then about three metres later, it screeches to a halt, wakes everyone up in the neighbourhood. That's right. So an EV is perfect for that sort of environment because you're only moving those short distances. You're not going a long distance in a day. Oh, okay, I'll jump in there, uh, Maddie. When I've got a battery, if I don't use it, it goes flat. If you didn't use that battery at all for months, you'll normally you lose a little bit you know, right. on an average. Of that happens on your smartphone, month. doesn't it? Yeah, that's yeah. right. If you, if you charge it fully and then set right. it down, come back a month later, it might be down to 90% okay. and you've done nothing. So I'm in this huge truck. I stink like you wouldn't believe because I've got garbage <laughs> in the back. Yep. And I go from, uh, 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 uh. doesn't that shorten the life of the batteries in the EV? Uh, no, it's because you're only using it when, in that scenario, it's not sitting there idle for a month at a time. It's in there idle for a few seconds at a time. Yeah. And then you're using it. But when you're braking, you're regenerating power as well. So you accelerate and then you're braking part of that's putting some power back into the actual battery. So perfect scenario. Uh, you say that's already been happening. You're mentioning something like Sunshine Coast. What are they doing? Well, they're doing something different again. And, and I love the concept. I'm not sure if it's viable everywhere. They've spent $21 million in one little area in a six kilometre pipeline they've built for vacuum extraction of your garbage. So forget the garbage truck, forget yeah. EV, yeah, forget yeah, whatever yeah, you yeah. do there. You put your garbage in a chute and it goes down and gets stored in, in little repositories. And then twice a day, a vacuum pump extracts all of that garbage along this six kilometre pipeline right. to then take it to somewhere that then presumably is taken off. Doesn't that happen tip. with your sewer now anyway? It happens with your sewer, but these are much bigger pipes and they're designed basically to have garbage rather than sewers rely on right. gravity and liquid. This relies on a huge vacuum that, again, uses air pressure to okay. remove that. So where's the inlet? So, that's a really interesting part. Somewhere along that, obviously, if you're going to have a large amount of suction, you need to have somewhere for the air to come in. So they build as part of that pipeline a little extraction point where air comes in. So if you were standing there beside that out in the park, it, it might disappear. be... <laughs> you'd better be careful that you don't have you know, a loose hat on or something because it's going to be taken there as all that volume of air gets what taken What generates that suction? So there'd be a major pump you know, with fans, a bit yeah. like a, 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 an aeroplane has... A, propeller and it spins, right. it'll be something like that in terms of a small pump or a large pump to drag that through. But the other part that's quite interesting, we in our CBD, for example, here, we've got garbage bins and council workers go along and they open that up and they pull out a wheelie bin and empty it. They're actually putting these into the system in Maroochydore as well. So again, you just drop your rubbish in, walk away, don't think about it. But twice a day, it just opens to drop down into the vacuum chute and then... Away it goes. So we've eliminated the garbage truck. You eliminated the garbage truck in small areas. But again, 
I'm talking $21 million for six kilometres. So retrofitting, I think, would be... $21 million. I know, dollars. I know. That, that would be incredibly expensive retrofitting. But where I can see this is if you had a new area, a new part of a CBD being built, even a new housing development, when you're laying all the pipes anyway, all the sewage and water and power and electricity or, or telecommunications, yeah. then laying some pipes for this would probably be fairly cost-effective at the same time as doing right, it Rather else. than digging it all up and uh, doing digging it all now. Up and doing it now yeah. Well, that the sort of under, uh, underground stuff happens in new estates, doesn't it? Correct. You're doing that anyway. Yeah. One more pipe mm. is probably not going to add anywhere near the same expense as retrofitting oh, and trying to go back and, and fill those. Matthew Dickerson, your uh, past life as a councillor is coming to the fore here <laughs> because you are thinking of all the money that councils are going to suck out of our pockets, let alone the rubbish that's going to be sucked down the pipe. Where does it end up? Yeah, it all goes to the garbage tip as per normal. All oh, right. I mean, some of these here, the, the really interesting part is they've actually got them set up so that you have three different deposits. So, you know, your green waste and your recyclable oh, waste. Oh, don't start with that again. But it doesn't matter at the moment because they're all going to the same spot. But yeah, hopefully yeah. one day we'll get better with that. So quite an incredible system. It's been built overseas. This is the first council in this nation. Is it a test Coast. case, is it? They're kind of done as a test case, although... Expensive test case, but yeah, but I, I think the potential is there again for those new developments. But overseas companies want to come in and do this in Australia. I'm I'm happy to let them do yeah, that at yeah. a better price. Yeah, but as you say, it's only better if it's a new estate. So we can't see Macquarie Street being dug up and these pipes put in. Can Not we? in the near future. It's just there's so much already underground in yeah. any sort of development developed area. But then to go and dig it up and lay those pipes, it's not cheap. So no. if you're going to do it, you really want to have a good business case. And what you might save in terms of the garbage trucks and the employees of all that, if you want to get a return on investment in a few years' time, you don't want to have to say, for the next 178 years when this system is in operation, we'll finally get our money back. It's just not viable. What happens if the pipe cracks? Well, I'm, I'm, that's one point, but the other part is when stuff gets stuck, yeah. I don't want the job of being the one that makes sure yeah. that state pipeline is clear because that's potentially, someone puts way too much stuff down, it's very sticky, it yeah. kind of almost glues together. There's potential there for that what as well. What about those, uh, they were doing it in London only a couple of months ago, they're dragging out these huge uh, burgers, they called them, of junk, yeah. of this uh, contaminated blobs of waste that, yeah. they, that are jammed in the sewers. Sounds like fun, doesn't it? Oh, so I'd like to, uh, <laughs> truckies, you're never going to get out of a job, I would don't worry about that, Matthew Dickerson. We have talked enough rubbish, wouldn't you say? Absolutely. Breakfast is take talk, 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 take talk with Matthew Dickerson.